I don't even know how I could sneak up on anyone with all that slushing sound. Here's your look at the Mattel Mass Universe Masterverse, the new adventures of He-Man Slushhead. This Master Universe Masterverse Slushhead is a deluxe action figure that brings the new Adventures Mutant Enforcer to life at 7.2 inches tall, designed with 30 points of articulation and a high level of detail fans will love. Calamar comes with swappable heads and hands and accessories including swamp water backpack, four tentacle arms, and a battle axe accessory. It's a shame that with all the air he can keep in, he still manages to let the stink out. Before, of course, we get a closer look at the not-so-new Masterverse New Adventures of He-Man Slushhead, I did find this one actually in the wild, so I can at least say that. The figure, though, has been around for months, and finally finding one at my local Toys R Us, I picked it up thinking I was going to find a rare figure. And sure enough, I end up going to a Toys R Us then a week later, and that other Toys R Us had about eight of these. So I know he's probably been circulating for a while. Slushhead, though, still stands about seven inches in height, or the figure is going to be about 17 centimeters tall. I'd like to have been able to bring in the Masterverse New Adventures of He-Man Skeletor. Unfortunately, though, checking online, that guy is still going for crazy stupid money. I would love, though, to get my hands on that Skeletor. There's something about the New Adventures of Skeletor that I find charming, and shielding myself against the throwing turnips, I'm sure that fans of Master Universe or lacking fans of the New Adventures of He-Man probably will start to throw at me. Eventually, when I do get my hands on that Skeletor, rest assured, a review will be coming shortly. Uh, in the meantime, though, we can at least bring in other figures that made up at least this wave. Along with Slushhead, this wave also happened to have the New Eternia Faker. Yes, that still has a smudge on the forehead of mine. And while he's a little shorter, though, than Faker, he's about the same size as another figure that made this wave. Here's what he looks like with the Revelation Merman. Despite not being as familiar of a figure, at least the character of Slushhead does come in clue with quite a lot of things. Some are throwbacks to the original cartoon and the original vintage toy. I would have also loved to have been able to bring in the original vintage Slushhead. I had him at one point as a kid. I no longer have him as an adult. That original figure would have come in clue, for example, with his axe gun. It starts as an axe, it ends as a gun. Pew, pew, pew! It's molded nicely here in silver plastic and can really be wielded in both ways. If you wanted to have, for example, Slushhead carrying it around as an axe, it may involve a little more prying on your part, but you can actually get the axe in his hand like that. Or the more traditional way of displaying the figure, you can also get the axe as a pew, pew gun. You can also put that in his hands as well. The original vintage toy would have also had that as well. Now, the figure does also come in clue with a couple of swappable hands. By a couple, I mean he comes with two extra pairs. Closed fists, that really aren't going to serve much purpose, certainly when it comes to displaying with any accessories whatsoever, but they're nicely done, sort of more in an olive green plastic. These, again, just take the existing hands, of course, just remove them, divorce them from the forearms, and just swap them out with these instead. If you'd rather have more dynamic hands, then the figure also comes in clue with these really interesting webbed hands. Again, molded in the same coloring of plastic, can be removed and attached the exact same way. So just going to pop those off them forms and replace them as such. The figure also comes in clue with an interchangeable head sculpt. Now, they have advertised that one of these head sculpts throws more back to the original New Adventures of He-Man cartoon. I suspect it's this head sculpt, although really both of them are very close with one another, other than this one here that's already in his domed head, happens just to be a little bit wider in the cheeks. I would suspect that of the two, this is the one that's more based on the original New Adventures of He-Man cartoon. Again, you've got the larger eyes, very nicely painted. I think if given the choice, I probably would end up displaying the figure, I think, with this head sculpt rather than this one. Swapping out the heads, I'd like to be able to say would be easy. Unfortunately, it's not. Uh, just before, of course, we do that. The figure also comes included with his backpack. Now, he comes actually with two versions of his backpack. One, the Swamp Water backpack, which wasn't actually from the original toy, nor from the cartoon. Uh, cr created, I'm sure, for this figure alone. The top of it actually does have the little purple inside the dome. You could, in fact, actually take this off if you wanted to. And then take the other head sculpt that you're not currently using. And that just plugs onto the end of the ball joint. 
Now, I don't know how he's really able to breathe because, of course, he's now missing a dome, but he still retains all the same level of articulation. Just want to make sure you're attaching, you're attaching it in place. Now, if you wanted to, you could take the backpack as it is right now. Strangely, though, you could plug this on the back of the figure's body and he could be carrying around an underdeveloped clone of himself. I'm sure it would be a backseat driver the whole time. But let's go ahead and just put this back in place. Again, this is just a, you can see inside, actually, they just molded this in purple plastic and then they put the dome over top of that and that just plugs in place like that. Make sure I get that all the way in there. When you are, by the way, putting it in there, there is a latch. You kind of want to see how this little, I guess they all kind of have, there's little, these tiny little latches. You want to make sure that they're securely snug in place. You want to kind of put them in on an angle and then snap them down. But this just basically plugs on the back of the figure's body. The long posts fit very nicely on the back, the holes on the back of the figure's body. Although the length of the posts, I don't know how to be this long. Because, I mean, you really have to push it in to get that all the way on there. And, of course, as already Stating, I'm sure the already obvious is that it's going to add a lot of back heaviness to the back of Slushhead's body. The figure also comes included with all these tentacle arms that Ebud would make Doc Ock jealous. They vary from one another. One kind of looks like an anchor. One looks like the trident. One looks like a hook. And then one looks like a little pincing tool. Um, they have no real posability at all. They have hinges technically on the end. So I guess you could say that there's posability there. But these, again, just would plug onto the back of the figure's body. You'll notice that there's holes on all the sides. So normally you'd only probably just, well, you could decide really for yourself where you want to put them. If you just put them on the ends here, you're just going to take them. And not that there's necessarily one specific place that you have to put them. I mean, you can really decide for yourself any which way. If you want to have, say, for example, this one up here, you want to do that or down here? Okay, up there. We'll put it up there. We'll just plug it in place. They all work the same way anyway. So you're just going to take them, plug them in, plug the ones on the bottom in the bottom, and then just finish up the remaining one. Here we go. And now you got slush head with all the four arms attached. Again, stating the obvious, it is going to make the figure a little bit more back heavy, but the figure can be displayed that way if you want. What you could also do too, and more to the referencing of the original toy, you have this backpack, which I think is also more the one that he has in the cartoon. It plugs in the, way, the same way as the one that we had already looked at, although you'll notice that the post on this one is shorter. I don't know why this one had to be longer than, than this one. I, I'm sure they probably could have used the same length of pegs either way. But again, we're just going to detach this. And we'll come back to this, by the way. We'll just detach this on the back of the figure's body. There we go. And then we'll take this one and we'll plug it onto the back. I think more closer to the cartoon and to the original toy, I'd likely stick then with this one, I think, when it comes to displaying the figure. And again, he has holes on the back and on the sides. You just take the tentacles and attach them the exact same way. That kind of gives him more the look to the cartoon and the toy. Now, we're not done yet with this one, because what you can also do is you can turn these around. We'll take the ones from the top to detach those, plug them on the bottom. You know where I'm going with this. Somebody's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where he's going with this. You'll find out. You'll find out soon. We'll just take these, plug them on the bottom. And that would probably then explain why they have to have the holes in more than one place. Again, we'll just detach the top dome here. Take Slush has alternate head sculpt and pop it in place. And now you got yourself like a little, it almost kind of looks like Mr. Freeze. Remember when Mr. Freeze was just a head that had little tentacle legs? I think it was from Batman Beyond. You can kind of do something very similar here with Slush Head. Now, if, say, for example, you like this head, you're not as maybe crazy with this head sculpt, you can swap them. Here's my biggest issue when it comes to this figure is, first, we're going to remove this. For all intents and purposes, if you were to say, look at this head sculpt, you really like the look of this, let's say you want to turn the head. Well, you can't do it. You have to get inside the dome. So your next assumption would be, well, I'm just going to take the dome off. It does not look like it is detachable. You can't remove it. Judging by also the fact that my thumb is turning red, you can see that a lot of pressure is being applied. It's not coming off. The only way, in fact, to actually change out the head, and I think this is foolish, is that Mattel made you have to detach the entire armor to do it. You just have to take these back straps here. And I find it helps to just shift them to the side, just to free up a little tension onto the side. Detach one side, and then we'll do the exact same thing on the other. Once you have those two detached, you take essentially the entire, the entire front suit that he has, and you're just going to take it off his body completely. Now, I don't know if this is going to cause him problems breathing. <coughs> so we'll maybe not leave it off for too long. But here's the alternate head sculpt that he has, which again, I think is more closer to the original toy. A little bit fuller in the cheeks down below. It looks like he actually has mumps. Mumps? Was it mumps, the ones where you got puffy cheeks? Um, or, again, you can have this head sculpt. So let's just take this one off. 
and again, show you guys the differences between the two. Fuller on the face on this one, a little bit more narrower on the face, which again, I think looks a little bit more like the cartoon. Changing the heads, again, is just a case of popping the head off the ball joint. There we go. Replace the head that we want to switch it to. And that just goes back onto the ball joint. You may have put a little bit of pressure. But my biggest thing about this is once I get this on here, there we do we have it all the way on there? Okay, good. Once you have it on there, this should all be a lot easier without having to take this off every single time. From again, looking at the inside of it, it doesn't look to be the case where you can take this off at all. Is this not just a simple fix? I mean, could this not have been? We've, we, we've already seen the example of this. This came off. This came off of this. Could they not have done something very similar with the dome? I'm sure it could have just sat inside. But I mean, it looks like it's really on there. If you could get it off, if you have gotten it off, you can let me know down below in the comment section, but it's that kind of resistance where I know if I'm putting too much pressure, I know I'm going to crack that plastic. So I'm going to go with the idea, the assumption that the only way to do this is to take off this entire armor piece every single time. If that is the case, I think that's ridiculous. Let's go ahead and put this back over to the figure's body. So for the obvious reasons, when you're looking at the articulation, there's really no way to get anything to move on the figure unless you take this off every single time. Again, we're just going to put this onto the back, plug these. I will say at least the armor is easy to change. If, I, if it is something where I'm going to have to do this a lot, don't worry, it's not. Uh, at least I don't have to fight too often. I mean, it's not like I have to like dismantle a lot of things, take the arms off or anything like that. At least it's easy to remove. And again, I think you get a little bit more of a cartoon look for Slush Head. The rest of his body is very much closer to what we would have had from the original vintage toy. I think there was also a Master Universe Classics version of Slush Head. Also didn't pick up but it has very similar kind of greens that he has. I really like these little tubes that he has on the sides of his arm. The original vintage toy would have had that as well. Really nice use to this sort of metallic, I would want to say teal. It's not quite blue. It's not quite green. Anyone that's really familiar with teal would know it's meeting somewhere in the middle. The coloring is really quite good. I really like the use of the metallic that they've used here. And it also carries over nicely down below here on his feet. Again, when you want to have this guy displayed, I prefer really to have this head sculpt, but again, you can go with either or. And then from there, you can also decide which backpack you want to go with. But I think to stick with the idea of this guy looking more like his original vintage toy, I'm going to change it out with this torso piece. And you never know, I might just end up having slush head then with his extra roaming head attached onto the sort of cybernetic body. So we're just going to move off, off to the side. For the figure's articulation, obviously can't get in there, can't check under the hood. So I'm just going to have to tell you guys there's a ball joint. It does, you know, it does all the stuff that a ball joint with a head would normally have been. Uh, these shoulders, at least, I can show you. They move out at 90 degrees. You can take those arms and rotate them all the way around. That's the same on both sides. This figure does have a swivel. I mean, luckily, the way they braceleted his uh, top of his bicep, it doesn't seem to be getting in the way at all if you want to rotate his bicep. It has a double hinge on the elbow. The hands do rotate all the way around. Upper torso is on a ball joint, although it's a little bit more hindered just by the idea that he's got this extra torso piece over top of it. has a waist swivel as well. You can take the legs and split them out on ball joints. Take the legs and move them forward, move them back. There's a swivel three quarters of the way up the thigh, double hinge on the knee. Articulation, again, on the lower end of his boots. Not that I, would you still consider them boots, even though there's not really a foot section to the boots? I guess those would just be more gauntlets than anything else. He has a hinge back and forth on the feet, speaking of which, and there's also an ankle pivot as well. Nice looking figure. I, th I don't think this is a figure that once you start to find him, because it took me a while to actually find this guy, but once you do eventually start to find him, it's like owning one year, like when you buy a new car and you think that you never see that car on the street and then the moment you buy that car, all of a sudden it's like, hey, I see that car. Hey, there's another one of those cars. You might probably come across three or four of these during your day's travels. I feel like the same thing. Why am I having such a hard time getting this guy to stand? I feel like the same thing could probably be also said here for Slush Head. Slush Head is one of those figures that Probably you had a hard time to find, but now that you've found him, like me, you can probably go to several Toys R Us and probably find half a dozen of these. That was the case. I went to one Toys R Us. I said to myself, hey, whoa, wait, wait a second. There's a slush head over there. I probably would be the only person in history that was that excited to find a slush head, but I found him in the wild and I didn't have to order him online. The thing about it though, is that once I did find him, it only took a, a, literally a week or so later, I happened to go to another Toys R Us completely on the other side of town, and they had again like six of these. So I think the availability on this guy would be a little bit easier. You don't have to necessarily start to source this guy online, certainly you don't have to pay the crazy stupid prices like Skeletor would be going for right now. But if you like the new adventures of He-Man, I like the new adventures of He-Man, dodging of course the throwing turnips at me, it's a great looking figure to be picking up. I do hope we get more of these. Now, we do have the Skeletor. I hope we get Optic. 
I wanted to get the optic that got released from Master Universe Classics, released by Maddie Collector like years ago. But again, crazy stupid money. I'm not going to pay crazy stupid money. I'm going to wait it out and hope that the success of Slush Head, I mean, not that, that a lot of it's resting on his slimy shoulders, but at least hopefully the sales of this guy will prove that they can release still an optic. Optic is one of my favorite characters from the new adventures of He-Man. I do hope that he gets a plastic release sometime soon. Hey, guy, I don't know if you know this, but like Slush Head was released, what, like six months ago? You got to be like the last person on YouTube to even be doing a review of him. Surprisingly enough, were all the things that were running through my head as I was adding this guy to my shopping cart. I was actually just more excited than anything else. I was finding something in the wild that was brand new or somewhat brand new. Because up to this point, the only thing I was really finding was like the WWE, like Masters of the WWE Universe. What was that line called? Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie McMahon is like the easiest figure now to find. She's even making dollar store appearances now. And I've also been able to find quite easily the Revelation Faker and the Orko and Savage He-Man 2-pack. That's it. Came across finally Slush Head, threw this guy in the shopping cart right away. And I knew I was still wanting to review him, but I know I was going to get the same thing I said at the beginning of the final looks that I knew I was going to be looking at this guy pretty late to the game. Being a big fan of the new adventures of He-Man, loving the character designs, especially the villains. The villains, like for Skeletor, even when Skeletor got really weird and he sort of had like that kind of castle-shaped helmet that he got in the later season, still adore the look of new adventures of He-Man Skeletor. And all the characters like Optic, Slushhead, I hope that we still get ourselves an Optic. Please, Mattel, don't look at just the sales alone for Slushhead to decide whether it's worth to pr produce Optic. I'll buy 100 Optics. No, actually, I shouldn't say that. Because the moment they do release Optic, Someone's going to tell me, hey, buddy, you did promise you're going to buy 100 optics. I'm not going to buy 100 optics. No one in their right mind is going to buy, even if they love the character, nobody in their right mind with that money, that much money to spare is going to drop that much to buy 100 optics. No one's going to do that. But I am certainly hoping that we are going to be getting some new, more new adventures of He-Man figures. I mean, again, I like the look of Slushhead, but he's pretty easy to find now. Now that, of course, I have found him. Slushhead does come with some pretty cool look looking accessories that you can either have the figure displayed the way that he looks in the original vintage toy which i'm thinking was more the original head sculpt and then changing it out was more to the cartoon accurate head sculpt he does also come with two different variations of backpack but either way both of the backpacks do accommodate the two supported tentacle arms so i really like the idea that the four tentacle arms can be mixed and matched with the two different backpacks that he has and then if you didn't want to have the figure displayed with the backpack and the tentacle arms you got yourself sort of like this kind of spider leg walking, almost like Mr. Freeze kind of looking slush head that you can have displayed along with the figure. Slush is a great looking figure if you don't mind picking this guy up. Now, obviously, if you're not a big fan of New Adventures designs at all, then it's going to be a hard sell. Whatever praise I'm selling this guy for behind the camera is not going to be enough. I'm thinking of pushing in the direction of picking this guy up if you don't like New Adventures of He-Man. If you avoid that cartoon like the plague, you're likely going to be also avoiding Slush Head at, like the plague. But like Mattel, please release an optic. There's no way I'm buying a hundred of him, though. What do you guys think of Slush Head? Let me know down below in the comment section. And how long ago did you pick up the figure? Please don't. Don't remind me. If you guys, though, in the meantime, did enjoy this video, I want to throw it a like if you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and would like to be on board for something a little bit newer when it comes to Motu stuff, which I hope to promise that we are going to be looking at some slightly newer figures in upcoming videos. But yeah, if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on the bell notification. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.